Hello, everyone, and welcome to Boat Rudder Hunches, the show where we talk about um, what kind of rudder we think a boat has and how that might have contributed to its sailing capacity. Um, joining me today, as always, is my co-host, Kelly. Kelly, why don't you come on out and tell me all about your boat rudder knowledge? I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to you, Nicole. I don't think this the headphone thing is gonna work out. You don't think so? I think you should try a little longer and maybe just fidget with that for the whole time, and we'll see how that yeah how that plays out. Actually, now it kind of looks a bit more like a pirate hat. I don't know, like maybe yeah. a, oh, a yeah. certain kind of era. So all I really have to do now is just like not my, uh, just not really move at all. Mm -hmm. Are you spelling that N-A-U-T? Yeah, absolutely. This is our nautical episode. I always speak in puns that you can't hear. <laughs> That's, those are the best ones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so. As you do, you, as you may you guys may have gathered, this is our shipwreck slash boat episode. Um, Kelly, do you have yeah, anything? Because we like haven't had the chance to have a nautical episode yet. <laughs> yeah, you know, we definitely have stayed away from like the underwater themes. So, um, yeah. So here's my here's my question about the new format. Mm -hmm. Is like you said, this is boat rider hunches, right? Yes. But you asked me to share my knowledge. Yeah, well, I mean, so, a like, hunch is usually based off of something, right? I don't know. Is what's, it? Your gut, what's your gut tell you? Well, because I've been watching a lot of, like, the, you know, those Alex Jones hearings, and I'm starting to see this, like, strategy yeah. of, well, like, I mean, why have knowledge when you can just have hunches? You can get more hunches per hour in if you don't spend time accruing knowledge or checking facts. Like, it slows you down. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Um... You know, it also probably slows you down all of the time and energy and money you have to spend um, in reparations for the people that you've harmed um, based on your hunches. But, you know, go ahead. You just go ahead and spend You know what, Nicole? <laughs> Those reparations are a lot less than you think, so. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to talk about anything or should we introduce our guest? Uh yeah, I mean, uh, I think this week we have a, a very special opportunity, and that our our guest had volunteered to read erotica for us. So I don't know, I don't know if that if we were going to start with that or we want to like switch it up, work it in later. You know, maybe the last five minutes, bring out the guest. The last ten minutes. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, maybe just for the end, just for the erotica, and then we can play the game ourselves. Um... Yeah, that would be good. I've always said there's too much guest. Yeah, that's the one thing about the show is that there's not enough of just you and I awkwardly bantering back and forth. I think mm -hmm. is the main criticism. Um, but you know what? Let's let's we can work on that next week. Let's stick with the format this week. Let's bring out our guests and warm them up for for some uh, erotica. Um, introducing our guest, Tanner. <laughs> It's a lot harder to dance jauntily when I'm trying to balance the hat on my head. All right. Welcome, Tanner. Hello, um, hello. Tanner is joining us. Um, Tanner is from the podcast Beyond the Breakers, which is a show about shipwrecks, if I'm not mistaken. Shipwrecks, loss, and lessons learned from maritime disasters. Cool. That's, uh, I have to say, speaking of lessons learned, listening to your uh, podcast today, you really changed my life. Um, you guys said something that I had never realized before. Um, I didn't know you could use reluctant, reluctance as a plural word. Uh, and I was totally blown away by that. You can do whatever you want. Uh, that's yeah. what we've discovered. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's yeah, like it's it like it's anxiety. Cool. Only clowns have anxiety. Like real heads have many anxieties and many reluctances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, it's good to be here. I'm very excited. Been looking forward to it all day, thinking about nothing else. Oh, good. Well, I can't wait to disappoint you. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm debating. I, I was debating uh, telling our uh, telling our listeners uh, that that I was going to come on this show. Um, not not quite sure how it's going to go. So if I if I get uh, if I get myself canceled on here, uh, too bad. Well, we haven't been able to cancel anyone yet, despite our best efforts. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how erotic this erotica is. Mm. Um, yeah, actually, before we get to the erotica, um, no, actually, let's do the erotica first. I have a couple of things I wanted to say about your show, but <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, let's, I guess, let's just dive right into the porn. That is why people show up, so. Um, and so this is uh, by by the porn you're referring to. We are both referring to the story of a dildo, correct? Yeah, like all this is just sack of decoration. This doesn't need to be here, you know, like just... Okay. He said decoration, but he means light reading for later. Um, okay. Well, there's nothing light about it. <laughs> so um, I actually never received the porn. So if we're all going to be reading it and doing characters together, I need a copy of that there. Kelly. I might have only sent it to Josh. This is this isn't possibly entirely my fault. So I'm just going to let you two work your magic. And uh... yeah, I guess while he's doing that, I will show you this. Um, so listening to your podcast, I think I was ta telling you, I was kind of scrolling through um, and I was like, ah, okay, this is the one I recognize, which of course it's the Edmund Fitzgerald, which is like very well known in pop culture. Like you guys talked about on the podcast, Gordon Lightfoot wrote a song about it. Um, so I was supposed to be doing my character sheet and instead I made this. Um, I've also been watching the Witcher. <laughs> <so. laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> I've never, uh, I, I've never watched The Witcher, but I, I, I know enough to get it, so mm -hmm. it's good. Very I, yeah, nice. I've, I was watching the show, and then my husband's been playing the game, so I thought that was... <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Good. Glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> um, and then I was uh, going to share with you, actually, the first... So um, you were talking about the Gordon Lightfoot song, which is obviously, like, the most famous pop culture reference, I would say to the Edmund Fitzgerald and the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Um, the first time that I ever heard of it was slightly a slightly more irreverent song. Um, it's by an Alberta band called Captain Tractor. Um, so they're from our province. Um, and the song oh, is- about... Already skeptical. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's, uh, they're like a kind of an Irish Celtic inspired, um, like they have like kind of, yeah, Canadian themes, but more Celtic sounds, um, but they uh, have a song about getting absolutely trashed, fall down drunk, um, and one of the verses is about how he falls down and hits his head and uh, goes down like the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Um, and that was the first time I ever heard of it, and I asked my dad about it, and that was how I got that. And, he, and then he played me the Gordon Lightfoot version, which is obviously much more solemn and, you know, um, yeah. talk a little bit more about the tragedy of it. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah, much more appropriate, not sacrilegious like mm -hmm. like this uh, like this Captain Tractor uh, mm -hmm. that we've got here. So, yeah, what does he know about ships, anyways? He calls himself a captain, but uh, yeah. so I, I I cannot underestimate how badly I fucked up here. Uh, the the this PDF is too large to share over Discord, apparently. And uh, this means I need to email to you guys. So why don't you guys all just go ahead and say your emails to me live on stream here? <laughs> well, I'm going to message you that privately. Um, that's just... I'm, I'm going to eagerly anticipate you doing that. And then I'm going to read it out on stream. <laughs> um, while we're talking about emails here, I, I do want to point out that in my email, where I have the, uh, the erotica email from Kelly, it is right under a campaign email from Mandela Barnes, um, uh, from here in Wisconsin, uh, the subject heading of which is just pummeled. Okay. So those two go well together, I feel like. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Democra yeah. <laughs> Democratic messaging really has to get so, better, I think. I only half listened to that. Do you have, like, an, a, an erotic email called pummeled from, like, somebody campaigning? I would prefer if they were sending me those types of emails rather than continuing to ask me for $3 um every <laughs> every week um but yeah the uh the messaging is not really on point they gotta gotta do better than that mm. um that's not an inspiring uh subject heading there so sorry is that the is that someone that's running for like a that is a i 
I forget that I'm talking to Canadians here. I'm sorry. Um, I'll do better. But um, he is a uh, he was the lieutenant governor uh, of Wisconsin, and he's running for Senate now. Oh, okay. uh, and he's he's trying to replace uh, Ron Johnson. Uh, one of the one of the largest shitbags in America. So uh, he definitely has my vote, regardless of whether he asks me for money or he sends me erotica. I'm, I'm he's got my vote. So <laughs> does he get your three dollars if he sends you erotica? Uh, well, I mean, that's I mean, that really all depends on the quality of it. I'm I'm prepared to go up to as high as 15, depending on what he's sending me. Uh, OK, is that does that go for anyone or just like people that you're supporting while they're running for Senate? Um, I, I do like to keep that just to the Senate. I have different parameters, and that is what I use for my, my Senate uh, votes here. Okay, good. I was going to say, because if that's all that it takes to get people to send you $15, like, I could be, I could be writing so much erotica right now. I could put my job I'm, in full time. I'm a single issue voter, and that issue is erotica. <laughs> that's the important one. I don't... Ron Johnson sounds familiar. Do people call him Ron John sometimes? Is that a thing that's must. real, or is that something that I've made up? Maybe. Um, it's quite possible. I'm sure someone has done it. Um, I never have, personally. Um, but, you know, to each their own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like, on that note, you seem to have a pretty good understanding of the people in your kind of political area that you might call shit cunts. Is that correct? Uh, somewhat. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of them in Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin has a particularly, uh, a horrendous GOP. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of them to choose from here. Yeah. Cause our, our last uh, guest provided us with an entire PowerPoint presentation on, you know, local shit cunts who had lost their seats in the election. So I'm wondering if you'd kind of prepared something similar for us. Cause we kind of have expectations now. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't brought that with me. Um, it's something I could probably whip up. Uh, there's, there's again, plenty to choose from, but no, I've let you down here. Yeah, well, we've made a, we made a habit of just doing the stuff you should have done days ago on stream. So now that I'm done with sending the erotica to uh, Nicole and Josh, then why don't you go ahead and just make a PowerPoint presentation and we'll keep, we'll keep it up, uh, hold the fort down over here. Can I do a Prezi instead? I mean, I'm I'm not picky about brands. I'm hands off the wheel. All right, all right, cool, cool. Can I? Which is a great way to get into a shipwreck, incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Okay, so is this a pun? So it's a, the the erotica story that we're reading today is a, a story of dildo, but dildo is spelled D I L D O E. Is this a pun, or is this just poorly spelled? I think that's just an old fashioned spelling of dildo. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, that I, was my I, read on it. I'd always said I promised there'd be new erotica, but there it was. It's very old erotica. Now, see what I think would be funny though is because it says story of a dildo, a tale in five tableau. I think it would be funny if they spelled dildo, e a u x. Uh, although I guess that would be plural, so <laughs> that wouldn't. Work. Well, that's the sequel. They're gonna have the multiple dildos in the sequel. Like you gotta get, you gotta start people. You can't ratchet up the street, the stakes right away. Mm -hmm. The dildo cinematic universe. Yeah. <laughs> In this case, it's more of like a dildo prosaic universe because it's all written. <laughs> That's true. Um, this is when is this from? Is is this what, what I think? I think it's written in there if you're looking at it. Oh, 1891. So, oh, very nice. Yeah, very, very classy. Yeah, here's a here's a question I have because we have to stall until Josh gets back to read this erotica. Um, you're, so you're something, you've become maybe more of an old-timey nautical expert. How did the pirates get their hats to stay on over their headphones? Or sailors, you know? Well, I think the, the, the issue with the hats is that the hat was never designed to fit over the headphones like that. The AirPods were much more in vogue, um, starting around the, you know, the kind of the golden age of uh, the Buccaneers, you know, talking about like the late 1600s there. Um, so yeah, really that whole, the whole image of, you know, the, the bicorn or the tricorn hat on the pirate really is a construction of Hollywood. Oh. So, okay. So do you have any like suggestions for how I can get around this problem? Because the, I mean, I would love to take off the headphones because, you know, I hate to use the P word, but it's starting to make us look like a bunch of podcasters here. 
which you know we we obviously can't abide uh but i am also a huge dork and i got mad about the echo in my audio before so i can't just play through the speakers anymore cuz i have to spend hours and hours and hours on uh audio feeds that people aren't listening to I don't know. Are you asking us to solve your problem for you? Because this kind of sounds That's like hundred percent what I'm asking. Um, then no. All right. Well, at the very least, uh, we've stalled long enough for Josh. So, um, so, but I, I maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves here because I had offered to you, Tanner, that since this story had a narrator and three characters, the four of us can do it. But you're, you're, the, you're in charge here. How do you want this? erotica to be read like, do you want to just do the whole thing yourself um i would prefer to divide up the work a little bit i don't want to have all the fun um but yeah in terms of in terms of parts that you want to break it into i'm fine with whatever i'll narrate okay. i'll be flora i don't care mod Oh, I thought you meant you were going to like just play all of the plants in the story. Like, oh, I'll just voice all the flora and you can voice all the people. <laughs> you can be the fauna. I'll be the flora. Uh, there shouldn't be any fauna in this story. I feel like that would get into some really bad territory. I mean, it is dildo with an E, so. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I hate to be that guy but i my pdf is not showing correctly so i don't know if i here maybe oh actually you know what i'm gonna open it try and open it as a pdf and not a doc <sighs> all right so while while she's figuring that out tanner why don't you just forcefully assign us some roles here um okay well i i can be the narrator that's fine i can do that that's cool um, that's, that's probably the good, like, proper coward way to do it. It's just, a, you know, default to being the narrator. Yeah, that's good. Um, who do we have? Laura, Maud, and the dildo? Are those the other parts? Oh, the dildo <laughs> talks! Is the, are you reading the same story as I was? <laughs> no, who's the, who's the, the third uh, person? Uh, who, who, what's, the, what's the other part that we need? That's a great question, and oh, Laura, would... Flora, Laura, and Mod. <laughs> Flora, Laura, and Mod. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. Does anybody particularly want to be Flora? Kelly, do you want to be Flora? Uh, yeah. You know what? I want you to. I want you to dom us and just tell us. Tell us who we are. All right, Kelly, you are Flora, and then we've got Laura. Is, uh. Nicole. Nicole, right? And who's our last one? Maud. Mm -hmm. All right. And Maud falls to. I've forgotten the name. Who's well, our? That'll who's be our... that'll be Josh, but he's okay. he's not turning himself on in front of us. There, there we, we go. go. Now he's doing it. All right. Maud, Maud is inappropriate for him to turn himself on on camera. Yeah, we All tried right. to save that for after hours, Kelly. Come on now. Okay, I've All successfully right. opened the PDF, so um, you know, I also have it. Craps from open. props from me there. I'm glad that you guys have figured out Adobe. You'd be amazing how bad my technology is. It's still trying to load it. I don't know why. I didn't think PDFs were that big, but it was not letting me send it. You said it starts on page 17. Yes, on page 17 is where we start with the dream. God, we're so prepared. All right, yep, I'm I'm ready whenever anyone else is. Check. Wait, am I Flora or Laura? I've already forgotten. You're uh, you, you're Flora. All right. Also, I noticed that there's literally a typo the first time that they use that character's name. Oh, cool! It just says, Incredible. It just says Flora. Um, <laughs> all right. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Whenever you are. The story of a dildo, a tale in five tableau. Tableau one. The Dream. Madison Square is a fashionable locality in New York, attractive in its architecture, its position, and its inhabitants. Well-to-do merchants, cotton brokers, railway contractors, and bankers lived there, and there their fashionable wives and daughters gave receptions and held parties that were the talk of New York society. The belle of Madison Square was Flora McPherson. 
She's been celebrated in song for his, for it was Flora McPherson of Madison Square that made three separate journeys to Paris in search of novelties when she had, quote, nothing to wear. That is, nothing that was not perfectly fresh within the last fortnight. But this history deals with events in the life of Flora before she made the celebrated journey spoken of. As yet, she was but 17, plump, fair, rosy, with a wonderful fund of spirits, quick at repartee, and altogether what the Yankees call a smart gal. Flora's father was from a Scotch family, and the acuteness he inherited had enabled him to take advantage of numerous lucky chances in the way of railway work, the result of the combined skill and luck being a fortune. Flora was his only child. Her mother, a woman devoted to fashion and not companionable to him, so that Flora was indeed her dad's idol, and all that money could purchase her, she had. Her private purse was always well replenished, and she was in many respects a girl to be envied. Of course, so a young lady- Her private purse, is that a euphemism? I think that's a little bit of a double entendre there. Um, <laughs> cool. That's, I think that's what that is, maybe. I'm glad I wasn't um, the only one that caught that. Her private yeah. purse is always full, well replenished. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't sure, but if we were going to, you know, uh, if slow down to comment on the, the wordage here, but uh, I, I was looking at these terms, these very outdated terms, like smart gal. Are we still allowed to say that? <laughs> you, no, you'd get you'd get canceled for saying that. Okay, well then, good thing you said it. <laughs> um, it doesn't count if you're quoting someone. That's the rule. <laughs> um. All right. Of course, a young lady with such considerable personal attractions and with such an ample stock of dollars in perspective was not without admirers. But as yet, no aspiring young gentleman had made any impression upon her. She was heart whole, and though fond of society, at every gathering, she seemed to take more pleasure in the society of her young lady friends than in that of any gentleman who hung over her chair and poured his vapid, small talk into her ear. Her two close companions were Laura Addison and Maud Trump. What Laura a sexy was... name. Can we just stop and admire? <laughs> Maud Trump. <laughs> These are my two friends, Laura Addison and Maud Trump. <laughs> Like how could the uh, how could the the many the gentlemen even notice Laura Addison or or you know Flora <laughs> for that matter when there's the beautiful sensuous Maud Trump over there Maud Trump so oh, man. can we clarify was the author of this a woman uh, oh god we'd have to scroll uh, up to find that out oh, there man. are a couple yeah there are a couple of uh, indicators here that I'm wondering if I'm right on it doesn't say. Hmm. I guess we'll never know. So yeah, the specifically the vapid what was it? The vapid, vapid small talk that men are pouring into her ear. I was like, oh, that screams of like <laughs> someone that is like sick of dudes coming up to her and fucking trying to approach her. But mm -hmm. then also the part where she just casually is just like, yeah, the mother fucking sucked. <laughs> like obviously, <laughs> obviously her dad hated the mother. Is like a little bit, I guess that's just like boomer shit, but mm -hmm. I guess more than boomer shit at this point. But anyway. Yeah, what, what's, the, what's the generational name for people in the 1890s? Do we have one of those? Gilded Agers? I don't know. Um, all right. Uh, where are we? Maud, Laura Addison and Maud Trump. Uh, Laura was the youngest daughter of a cotton broker, a charming girl about Flora's age, but dark, warm, and impulsive, a good heart and a genial temper with southern blood in her veins that made her passionate and daring. I don't love the southern blood daughter of a cotton broker here, necessarily. Yeah, so uh, far, off to a bad start. Problematic. Mm, does um, not bode well for Laura. Maud was of a German family. Quiet, subdued, lymphatic, dreamy, and poetical. But her quiet eyes shewed a nature you could put firm trust in. And anybody who secured the affection of Maud Trump would have a friend steadfast and true. I can't say her name. <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's putting Maud Trump immediately in the friend zone. It's like, hey, Maud Trump, you're really trust me, you're really. Oh God, you must. I you're a really beautiful woman for someone, and I I really uh, see you as a friend steadfast and true. <laughs> uh, if I had to describe you, I would describe you mainly as lymphatic. Uh, I think that's a good... 
Um, you know, there's just Mon- not enough lymphatic women out there anymore. <laughs> you know, we need to we need to return to tradition there. Dat lymph. Um, <laughs> two two p's, two h's. What uh, that lymph do? <laughs> um, Maud was older than the other two and was engaged, but her lover held an important position in a mercantile house and was now in Europe for a year or two on business, so that for consolation during his absence, Maud was much in the society of the two girls. It was a quiet autumn evening when the three sat together in Flora's boudoir. They had not, they had not been discussing Shakespeare in the musical glasses, but a theme more interesting to all women. Love. Mm-hmm. Shakespeare in the musical glasses, my new band name. Please continue. <laughs> Flora and Laura had been congratulating Maud on the approaching return at the return AF, uh, her fiance. <laughs> it would be there so hard. He's, he's returning return AF. AF. <laughs> um, <laughs> the return, the return of her fiance, uh, to be followed soon by her marriage, a prospect that poor timid Maud seemed to dread. Oh. Oh shit! It's me. So you wish that courtship could go on forever, do you? Well, said poor Flora. girl. <laughs> said Flora, who is not the Southern Belle here. <laughs> what? I, no, oh, is Laura the Southern Laura, Belle? Laura's the Southern Belle. But you, I, did it say I'm from anywhere else? You're from New York, I guess. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to check that. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm caught in here. <laughs> So you wish that courtship could go on forever, do you? Well, poor girl's rather rough on you to have a slice of two years take out of a pleasant courtship. And then on Henry's return, before you've got used to him again, to be... I don't need to fan myself if I'm not a Southern Belle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, where was I? Reading here. It is rather rough on you to have a slice of two years take out of a pleasant courtship, and then on Henry's return, before you have got used to him again, to be hurried into all the abruptness and reality of matrimony. (laughs) Still, Maud, my dear, realization (laughs) in spite of metaphysics must be better than anticipation. No, I don't know what that means. I know my dinner itself is better than the pleasure of expecting it, and it would take some powerful argument to convince me that a husband we can love is not better than a lover we can ditto. What do you say, Laura? A lover I don't know what, what ditto means here. <laughs> I, I, I read that as... I, I read that as she's she's using ditto, I think, re- regarding the love aspect, saying, why would I love a husband when I could just love someone that I actually love? Mm. Unless ditto is just New York slang for a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> a lover we can, it's just diddle. It's just diddle. It yeah. hasn't like, Maybe. Um, oh, also, I think, Ke- Kelly, I think the voice you're doing for Maud, or the voice you're doing would, is exactly how I imagine Maud talking instead. <laughs> yeah, but she's, she's German, so that'll be a fun one. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not even remotely going to attempt that. <laughs> well, I've already I've already committed to it. Oh yeah, okay. So she's saying that like dinner, it eating dinner is better than waiting for dinner. So having a husband is better than like being in courtship. Yeah, that's I, how I read. She's just making I, like a parallel structure there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. All right. So I, I'm done talking then. <laughs> oh, I am with you, my love. By all means, replied Laura. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for my part, I quite envy Maud her good fortune. Henry is a fine, manly fellow, and I'm sure he loves her. <laughs> and his two years in Europe have no doubt improved him, if that were possible. I I anticipate her a very happy life. Oh, you must quite mistake me if you think I have any dread or doubt about my future. Said Maud earnestly. It's the actual plunge itself that I dread. I don't pretend to be any more modesty than any other girl, but I regard with positive horror the idea of, or... Of, well, I suppose, I need not be afraid of my own sex, of a man knowing all about me. Fancy now, feeling a man, a naked man, getting into bed with one. Ugh! And Maud positively gave a shudder. I think I see where this is going. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would like to hear a little bit more German uh, coming Oi. from Maud. Oh, you quite uh, mistake me if you think I have any <laughs> dread or doubt about my future. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
I will it's do fancy my best. now a man, feeling a man, a <laughs> naked man, getting into bed with me. Ugh. <laughs> uh, uh, who we have now? Uh, Laura, I think. Oh, has... sorry. Ha ha! Left, quick, impulsive Laura. Oh god, who's this? Oh, it's me. It's still you. <laughs> Why, my dear child, you shudder at what most women look forward to with supreme delight. And as for getting into bed with you, if I am any judge of Henry's disposition, it strikes me that he will get into more than that. Oh, there now, I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to say that, <laughs> oh, but, I, so... but the thought came and slipped out. Sorry, I missed. And she blushingly put her hand before her face. I missed oh, that. she did Sorry. it visually. It was great. It was great okay. visual work. This is why it's okay. not an audio medium. <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't on the camera there. Um, let's see. Maud blushed, and Flora could not help laughing. Well, Maud said, "Flora, I can sympathize with you to some extent, but only to a limited extent. <laughs> from my part, the shock my modesty will receive from the presence or even the contact of my husband." Will, I feel certain, be less than what I shall suffer from what I call the indecent exhibition of a wedding. In the privacy of one's own chamber, with only one's husband to see your blushes, I think there's nothing but what one can get over. But I think it's something awful to be dressed up for an occasion and be stared at by a lot of people who know perfectly well, even down to the youngest boy or girl, what it's all for and what you're going to be done to. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yes, said Laura. I have often thought of that. Why, when I was only 11 years old, I was a bridesmaid to Mary P Parker, and as we came out of the church, the remarks made by the low boys shooed all they knew. Shooed, they all knew what it meant. It was something awful. Why, one boy positively called out, Oh, my eye, there's another shop going to be open tonight. <laughs> and the coachman... <laughs> And when the coachman drove the carriage up, he didn't come close enough to the curb. One man said, now coachman, come up. The lady can't, young lady can't stretch her leg out all that way. And then a nasty rough fellow says, oh, never fear. She'll stretch more than that if he's up to his work by and by. Oh, oh. oh my dear. I thought poor Mary would have fainted. Yes, a, wed a wedding is all very well for the dresses and all that, but it has its dark side as well. What weddings are these people going to? Yeah. <laughs> Shit was crazy back in 1890. Now to tell you the truth, said Flora, and I shall, since we on the topic, speak without reserve, that remark the man made about, well, about stretching was rude but apropos. And it sets me thinking whether, after all, the embrace of a husband is such a desirable thing. I know I once heard Mama, when she little thought I was listening, tell a lady about the remark a young lady made who was congratulated on a wedding day. I didn't quite catch the, wor the words, but I know the idea was that it was a fun thing to be congratulated upon to be torn all to pieces the first night. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed a lot on that one. Do we need to take that line again? <laughs> um, no, I'm good. I'll, I don't, I don't I'll, I'll allow it. Go for it. <laughs> Uh, I did not quite catch the words, but I know the idea was that it was a fine thing to be congratulated upon to be torn all to pieces the first night. <laughs> I can't help thinking that the actual pain inflicted must be awful and not worth the pleasure they say comes after it. I cannot give any opinion, said Laura, about a first embrace and the pain it entails. But from an accident, I can give you the an idea. <laughs> oh, Laura, we know it wasn't an accident. About the first embrace and the pain it... Oh, sorry. But from an accident, I can give you an idea of the pleasure. Oh, you need not look so. I don't mean in my own experience. But when I was down south on a visit to Uncle Morris's plantation, I got overtaken one night by a storm and crept into one of the sugar houses for shelter. And there I fell asleep in a corner. When I, when I woke, I found I was not alone, for a smart young white man was there. One of the overseers, and a young woman, a 
pretty oh, no. not active. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, oh boy, oh. Nicole. Oh, no, now, no, no, I did, no, no, no. I did cheat by looking this up, but what do you no. think a c***ing is? I, I, I know, I know what a c***ing is. Yes, dude. And, 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 that's, and that's hopefully the last time I will say that word. Yeah, that's the um, baby stop saying that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a Google one. Oh, no. <laughs> I hate this. I hate that I learned this today. Did you find similarly that, you know, because refers to a, a quarter, I mean, a quarter something. We don't have to get into it. But then if you're one eighth of that same thing, you're an. Mm -hmm. oh. um, yeah, that's a it's a it's a troubling aspect of uh, New Orleans history. The uh, uh, Q word balls that they have. Um, yeah, you could look those up, too. Um, yeah. Balls. We'll move, we'll move on. Like yeah, a ball, like a party. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe start from pretty and just move on past that one. I, I knew I was going to get canceled because of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone's going to get canceled, it's going to be me. God damn it. <laughs> um, wow, I already hate where this is going. <laughs> they were talking earnestly together and I listened, at first thinking some plot was on for the slaves were in a dangerous state just then. Good lord. I found a dangerous state, so like Alabama? <laughs> a dangerous state. Yeah. No shit. A dangerous state? You mean <laughs> trying to get their freedom? Um, I found, however, that this was only a love scene and I was doomed to be present at. And oh my dear girls, I shall never forget it. After a lot of kissing and toying, the young man, Tony Barker, I found was his name. Oh, she just doxes him in front of all of her families. They're all her friends. <laughs> Got her aunt, got her onto a lot of sugar bags and made a capital kind of bed in a corner, and being thrown on a pile of canes was like a state bed and gave me a full view of the whole proceeding. Flora and Maud drew their chairs eagerly up to Laura and in one breath exclaimed, "Oh, do oh, tell, tell us about, about it. it!" Well then, in perfect confidence, I will. After kissing and playing, Tony. For I learned to call him that, took out his dilly. His di <laughs> dilly. I don't know why I said that with a British accent. His dilly. Oh, don't be so stupid, said Flora, as to call it a dilly, and that is only what they say in the nursery about okay. a little boy. Surely you know some more manly name for a full grown man's. What? said Laura, laughing. Why, you hesitate yourself before naming it. However, if it will please you, I will call you call it by its proper name. And in these days of women doctors, there can't be any harm in that. Oh, well, thank God we have women doctors so we can say the word penis now. <laughs> women doctors, <laughs> am I right? Doctors. Oh, what a revelation. Well, he took out his penis <laughs> <laughs> and put it into her hand. And oh, it was a tremendous fella. I couldn't take my eyes off it. It made me burn with blushes. And a great staring stiff thing with an immense red head, enough to frighten anybody. However, Juno... <laughs> Why did I get Laura? <laughs> <laughs> Juno was not a, fr a bit afraid of it. She fondled and caressed Sorry, what kind of girl was Juno? <laughs> she was a nice one. Okay. <laughs> uh, she fondled and caressed it and actually kissed it. Then she laid back, and he lifted up her clothes, and I cert and certainly I never saw straighter or handsomer limbs than were displayed. Well, he got over her, and in a moment inserted his pego. Pego, yep. spelled P-E-G-O-E, -E for those listening. Is is that pego? Like, what is that? Pego, pego. Pego, eh? Peg away. All right. Yeah. Oh, actually, we're almost at the end of a section. We can we can plug through to that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> said Flora. <laughs> I've caught you. There's not a name for it, and a name I saw in a bad book. Oh, Laura, you have to read the book too, or one like it. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I have read one or two, said Laura. For I got at my brother Tom's box one night, and one day, hunting for a trinket I thought he had stolen from me in fun. And there I found one or two books. However, don't spoil my story. Well, 
When he got in, she gave a slight scream, perhaps of a little pain, but in a minute he, I was changed, I'm sure, for, to, it was changed, I'm sure, to pleasure, for as he pushed in and out, she kept exclaiming, oh, 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 I shall die, and you will kill me with the pleasure. <laughs> and at last he shot into her his sperm. She clutched him in ecstasy and fainted with delight. I could hardly contain myself, and I felt a most extraordinary sensation in my drawers from sympathy. <laughs> it's the, that's the sexiest way to refer to those, is drawers. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, oh, boy. Uh, during Laura's narrative, the color of the other two girls came and went, and their countenances and nervous twitching of their lips shooed the story excited them. Oh, I wish, said <laughs> Flora. That it were possible to taste such pleasures without the danger and the wickedness of a man. Well, so it is, said Laura. If you are bold enough, perhaps not the real thing, but at any rate, an excellent substitute, as they say of marmalade. <laughs> oh, whatever could you mean, said Maud. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dears, said Laura. You must know that when I read this book, by the by, Flora, you must tell me where you saw a bad book, as I, as you call it. I found at the end an advertisement of an instrument called a dildo. <laughs> oh, yes, I have heard of it, said Flora. Well, I have, in fact, the advertisement in my purse. I will read it to you. Um... And she read as follows. The dildo or lady's syringe. Ooh. <laughs> now that to me is as good a note as any to end with that on. <laughs> you don't want to syringe. Dildo? I think that uh, I think for the first introduction of the term, since it's new to them, I feel like it would be like an instrument called a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Stress That's would be fair. Um, uh, I'll take very that. Nice. that dildo. Very nice. All right. Well, that was cool. Yeah. Neat. On second thought, I don't know why we do anything but read erotic because it's by <laughs> far the best part of anything we do. <laughs> the whole show now. But I'm yes, just glad uh, I I'm just glad that I have people to read this story with. So it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that now. worked out really well for you because I thought, wouldn't it be fun if the guest had to like you know uh, embarrass themselves for once with the reading just batshit insane sex scenes? But somehow that just turned into me and Nicole doing it again. <laughs> Uh, but as uh, until the game starts, I, the producer, will vanish behind the scenes again, and I'm definitely not tending to my cat who is meowing obnoxiously behind me. Cool. Yeah, fuck off. Thanks, Josh. Um, so I think this person must have um, tuned in a bit late because earlier she was referring to how her purse, what was it, her private purse was frequently rejuvenated. Um, so we were, we, brought, we were discussing about how we think that purse is euphemism. So good catch. Oh, no, he's been there the whole time. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> right. They were the first comment. That's Hello. Tanner. Hi, Tanner. He briefly usurped your job, but we haven't released that episode yet. That's t Tanner? Yeah. Oh, Tanner. Meet Tanner. Oh, another Tanner. Oh, oh shit. Oh, shit. Very nice. All right. All right. So... I mean, we could we could do a bit of our uh, we could do something approaching an interview, mm -hmm. or we could dig into the question jar. We could do interview questions. I'm cool. I'm cool. Well, we know I you're got, cool. I've you got nothing team. to hide. I got nothing to hide. <laughs> you're making me suspicious. I feel like now it needs to be an interrogation and not an interview. I can turn on Did my. You can the turn on Fitzgerald. Was that I can you? Turn, let me turn on my bright light to make it feel like I'm getting interrogated. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Do you want to be the good cop or the bad cop, Nicole? Um, I think we should do bad cop and worse cop. Like bad cop that's bad, but like mean, and then also bad cop that's bad at their job. All right. In the same accents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Officer Maud. Or no, hey, that would be Hey Tana. Listen. <laughs> I got I got an accusation to level at you. I'm pressing that <laughs> X to doubt button. So did what? Well, why did you get into the nautical stuff? Did you just do it for the jokes? Um, mainly for the women. 
um, I would say. <laughs> By that, do you, you mean know? like the ships? Because they're all like, yes, they're all exactly. anthropomorphized in that way. Um, exactly. I'm going to turn this off because I hate it. <laughs> oh, you just made a bright. Um because um, I noticed this, like, not only does a lot of the maritime, this is why I got so distracted trying to listen to your show today, like, not only does the slang really lend itself to just endless riffing, but it really adds it to it when we anthropomorphize the ships and, you know, also make them all female coded. So, like, mm -hmm. you know, it'd be like, oh, yeah, she went down after she took a load that was too big for her to bear. And you're like, <laughs> okay, sure, yeah. After After she broke her back from carrying too much um but uh but yeah that's um that's a cool aspect of it the uh oh man i had something i was gonna riff off that perfectly and i've lost it um see this is why this is why i like the podcast medium because if i do that i can just add it in later and pretend i said it at the time um well we've said it a million times we'll say it again that's exactly why podcasters are cowards because you know it's like nobody wants to watch people walk tightrope above a net like fucking mm -hmm. boring right so no one wants to listen to someone walking a tightrope on a podcast. It's boring. Yeah. And clearly, Unless you got like, like good play by play. Clearly our show is so popular. We have a whole three viewers. So that's right. Well, we, we had four viewers, but it, I noticed that right around the time we dropped the Q word, it kind of like cut completely in half. So that was, uh, you know, that's probably, probably a coincidence. My bad guys. I didn't know. I'll never use yeah, it probably, again. probably, probably good. We stopped when we did, because who knows if if he's dropping the Q word in the first act. Who knows what comes later? I've just mm -hmm. always assumed that if a word is sufficiently obscure and old timey enough, like I thought everyone was going to have to Google it, which would mean that just like, well, you know, it, it can't be a slur if no one knows what it means. <laughs> uh Sorry, was there a question I was answering, or did I just? Did well, I, just I was. Totally I was really button? excited. I was hoping you were going to be able to riff off of the. Uh, you were either going to rip off the loads part or the she went down part, but like, there's so mm. much more there. You know, it's like, you know. Oh, I was gonna. I was gonna say she, she's um, got loose cargo holds. If you know what I mean. Regarding that, in our very first episode on El Faro, which is a decent episode, not well produced, not edited, like at all, basically. Couldn't um, be us. But a good story. Um, in that very first one, like very tragic tale um, of, of a ship going down with its entire crew. Um, sad story. But the entire very, crew's going down. But uh, yeah, oh, the whole crew going down um, on each other, on themselves. It's a mess. Um, all in the middle of the Caribbean. But uh, the, the term came up, uh, blowing tubes uh, in, in that first episode. Um, which, if I remember correctly, was was just totally emptying her ballast tanks. I think I don't remember at all. I just remember blowing tubes. <laughs> Sometimes your ballast tanks will empty if you uh, spontaneously you don't empty them before the act. So yeah. it's just it's fine. You just bring a towel, right? Sometimes overnight your ballast tanks will empty on their own. Oh, it's no. normal. Everyone, it happens to everyone. Well, the, the important thing is being able to laugh of it, laugh about it as a crew and just kind of right. you know, shrug it off and having someone to talk, talk about, you know, that with um, it's good to have a, a good, you know, crew uh, who you feel comfortable with. Um, that's that's really the the way to. Um, the way to, uh, you know, reach uh, success on the open seas. Mm -hmm. It's all mm -hmm. about the crew. It's all about crew resource management. We talk about that all the time on the show. Do you have any other like uh, this is nothing I didn't want to ask about. Like, what are you, you like? I mean, you're not like necessarily going to call yourself an expert or a, a scholar, but you've done a solid amount of reading about shipwrecks now. So from your kind of armchair perspective, what would you say are your top tips for not wrecking ships? Um, well, first of all, I mean, use your available information so you don't end up, you know, driving into a hurricane, uh, like we covered in episode one. Um, you know, if you're going to overload your ship, you know, maybe only overload it like twice as much as you should. Uh, once you get into the three times, four times is when you really run into some issues. Good um, word. With that, um, yeah, um, if, if you find yourself piloting a steamboat, um, if that's something that happens, um, don't overload your boilers. Um, stay away from Norwegian ships. 
uh, that is actually um, one of my very good friends, uh, Taylor, my co-host, uh, who's chiming in there, um, saying, stay away from Norwegian ships. Very good mm-hmm. advice. So um, your co-host, who did not want to be on the show, is watching the show. I believe he's at work right now. Mm. So, yeah, that is, I think that explains that. Um, sorry, can you tell us the, hi, can you tell us the, I'm sorry, I'm talking to your co-host there, Taylor. Can you tell <laughs> us the story behind your uh, name on Twitch? I, I just read a book and that was one of the characters' names was Sobek. Um, and I'm curious if it's got like a similar origin. He was like a river god. Like crocodile river god from Egypt. Is that ringing any I will, bells? I will chime nothing- in and say... I will chime in and say, yes, that's what that is. Um, oh, no if, way. Cool. If Taylor doesn't respond. Um, but yes, well, the only thing better than an interview with uh, one of the two hosts of a podcast is an interview with the other post via like text response on like a 15 mm-hmm. second delay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's excellent. Um, but um, hey, we got both of us on here. Um, yeah, I was uh, I was talking about steamboats and um, crazy stuff in the days of steamboats. Um, you know, they make safety. Uh, measures even back then they had safety measures you know saying you can't uh you can't push your boiler past x uh point um captains would often tie down those safety valves so that they couldn't engage um and make it go even faster um and so that's why you see so many stories about steamboats just fucking exploding uh because they're being worked too hard um so don't do that um that's probably the the last piece of advice i would give um don't get in duck boats ever what are duck boats uh, a duck boat. Um, so we, we have a whole episode about duck boats. I think it's episode 31. Uh, duck boats were a amphibious vehicle that was rolled out during World War II. Uh, they mm-hmm. were first used in the invasion of Sicily. Um, they're, they're similar to what, what you're thinking of, like a landing craft like you see on the D-Day landings. Um, but they've just got wheels. So they're, like, they're kind of like Heelys um, in that sense. Um, but uh, yeah, so you could get in them uh, in the water, drive up the beach, um, and you know, do your thing. Um, they're kind of made to be disposable, uh, not something that's supposed to be kept around for seventy years and then used for like tourist sightseeing purposes. Oh no! Um, so yeah, there's been multiple fatal uh, accidents involving duck boats. Just a few years ago, uh, the big one we covered was in Branson, Missouri, on Table Rock Lake. Um, I forget how many people died. Um, but yeah, they sink very, very fast, and they're very hard to get out of if they're covered with a canopy. Um, oh, good lord! Yeah. Oh. So yeah, that was our that was our most infuriating episode, probably was the duck yeah. boats. This I'm very curious to listen to more of your episodes because I yeah listened to the Edmund Fitzgerald episode, um, and it's just it, it's really interesting to hear about. But I also like that's my two biggest fears are like deep water and an open space and i think that's for the same reason it's just such like a vast expanse of like nothingness that can kill you um and so listening to your podcast also like gave me just like a creeping sensation of just like i'm not safe anywhere and i'm very happy i live in a landlocked province yeah i we addressed this in our first episode i kind of talk about that a little bit but i'm like terrified of being on a boat or being on a ship um Mm. i would probably never want to do it um they're fun to read about taylor's much more of a actual on the water person than i am um and yeah after doing all the research for the show that probably isn't going to change oh yeah yeah fair stay on land Mm -hmm. there's definitely something good there in what you're saying about the steamships about how like you know you're you know, you're tying you're tying things down so that you know you can keep pushing her until she explodes. Like, mm-hmm. there we go. <laughs> also, uh, steamboats, steamboats. Come on, man. Mm-hmm. Did you want to elaborate on that? What? I'm saying there's a very big difference in a steamboat and a steamship. So let's just mm. make sure we're all talking about the same stuff here. What is the um, difference between a steamboat and a steamship? Uh, the term steamboat usually refers to like a paddle wheel steamer. Um, so like, mm-hmm. yeah, either on, I watched, I watched Mickey Mouse either on the side. Exactly. Um, either on the side or on the back. Um, they actually did make center wheel steamers, but very rare. Um, I don't even know what they look like. I don't think there's any pictures of them, but they did exist apparently. 
So, mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I were in the movie Maverick with Mel Gibson. Or there was one. They played poker on it. I, I don't think I know that. Up. I don't think I know that Mel Gibson movie. Oh, it's, I mean, it's Mel Gibson. It's fine. He's a, uh, it's genius. Is that what you were going to say? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we actually uh, had to talk about in it, so she's we, good. we had to talk about Mel Gibson a good bit when we did our bonus episode about the movie The Bounty. Mm. Uh, so that was fun. Um, like Mel Gibson. The Bounty? Uh yes. Mm -hmm. Um it's it's that same story. Um that one has him and Anthony Hopkins. Uh Liam Neeson is in it too. Um it's from the, I think it's from 1982. Um so it's very young, very hot Mel Gibson um younger still as hot anthony hopkins um yeah it's a, it's a great cast that movie has cool i'm into it um actually i'm curious i meant to scroll through and see did you guys have you guys covered ever covered um oh shoot the ship wasn't the franklin i think franklin was the captain but it was they were trying to find it's a can, kind of a canadian story you, you referenced dan rogers so i'm sure you've listened to the um Northwest Passage. Oh, so. are you talking? Are you talking about the um, the terror? That's the one. Mm -hmm. um, mm. We haven't we haven't done the terror, um, but I mean it's something we we might consider doing again. That's one where there's just so much devoted to it. There's a whole. I don't I don't know if you've seen this, but there's there's a massive uh, terror community on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. I mean the ship, not like. There's a lot of terror communities ISIS. on Twitter. <laughs> like, there, 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 there are a lot of terrorists in general. Um, I don't think the terror fans like being called terrorists. Um, but yeah, there's 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 um quite a lot of that going on. There's always people who have these very cool, very niche interests um, that really keep up with that story and some of the new things that keep coming out about it. Um, so yeah, we we've never done that. We've never really done um, any Arctic. Well, we've done a few things um, kind of up close to that area, but nothing really from the age of exploration. Um, definitely something we, we would look into. Um, mm -hmm. That one might be a bit big for mm -hmm. us. Kelly, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> that might, might be a bit too much for us. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I, th I find that one, um, I guess I think I find that one curious, part partly because it's Canadian and it's like a, something that I've learned about in Canadian history, but, um, partly too, because it was just recent, like, I guess recently is like, I was still in university, so it was like 10 years ago or something, but it's, it was only found like eight or nine years ago. They've been searching mm -hmm. for it for years. Um, I thought that was pretty cool that it was just yeah. like all the yeah, that's always it's always cool when you know any of these uh, you know missing ships finally do turn up, especially one with that much um, that much has been written and discussed about it uh, is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. We we did also have to talk about John Franklin a little bit uh, in one of our bonus episodes when we were talking about, I think it was when we talked about prison hulks. We had to talk about him briefly for his time in Australia. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh oh, what was he doing in Australia? I'm already scared. Uh, something administrative. He was like a lieutenant governor of something. Um, I forget what it was. Uh, something in the in the administrative. Uh, probably something involving prisons. Um, but yeah. I just assumed shitty colonial things, but. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. Um, in that same episode that we did get to talk about the basically the head guy uh, of all of the uh, the prisons in Australia or one of the areas of Australia. Uh, he was actually visiting one of his prison hulks and he uh, ended up getting his head bashed in with hammers and rocks. So score one for the convicts there. Uh, right. So we, when that we, we do occasionally have happy stories on the show. Um, they're rare, but they happen like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. It, and that's actually one reason that Josie's episode was so fun because it was a little, we could be a little bit more lighthearted with the wreck itself. Um, you know, it was more of just kind of a fun story. We didn't have to sort of pause and, and remember the fallen, at least on the, the ship itself. Mm -hmm. It, it sucks when you make a really good pun and then you have to be like, Oh yeah. And 24 people died. No. 
Yeah, yeah, it's hard to make that switch. Mm-hmm. Speaking speaking of hard to make a switch. Uh huh. I was teeing you up. You're queuing me up. Oh, speaking of hard to make I mean, a switch. I mean, it's your show, Nicole. I just wanted um, to set you up for success. We're doing question jar. It's your show, Nicole. You tell me. Okay. Yeah. Let's do a question. One question. From the question All right. jar. So, do you want to uh, explain to Tanner how it works? Yeah. So the premise of question jar, if you're open to it, is we draw a question out of the question jar. Um, you answer the question, um, and then afterwards or during the show um if you can send us a question to add to the question jar it's um the idea is that it becomes an ever-growing thing okay um i I do i do have one question though so the questions are in the jar the questions are right here as you see them and And you and you take them out of the jar is that well correct we take out as many questions as you consent to answering but anything that comes out of the jar you have to answer it so you your answer can be zero. You know, it is permitted. Okay. But okay, once gonna, you once you agree to pull it out. I'm going yeah. ma- to make an amendment there. You can say no at any time because that is how consent works. Cool. All right. I like it. But is that how um, the jar works? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, let's do, let's, do a, let's do a question. All right. So, and for however many that you pull out of, however many you answer, uh, you get to add one. So if you answer like five questions, you can add five. Cool. All right. Uh, so this one is: what's the thing, what's the best thing you've learned from a stand-up comedian? The best thing I've learned from a stand-up comedian. Best thing I've learned from a stand-up comedian actually has to do with. Um, it actually has to do with uh, my teaching. Uh, I'm always looking for more examples for teaching. Uh, language in the wild basically to to share with students and one of them comes from mitch hedberg um and he has his his very famous uh bit where he says um i used to smoke weed i still do but i used to too Mm -hmm. um and what i do is what what i what i guess i have learned from that is that i can really find useful uh, useful language anywhere even where i'm not necessarily expecting to find it like in a stand-up routine um I use that in class when we are talking about the phrase used to, um, where it has that very high context of if you're using that, it indicates that you don't do this thing anymore. I use that clip uh, of of his stand up. Um, when we're talking about that towards the end of that unit, I'll play that clip. Um, and that kind of gives me a gauge of which students understand this construction and which ones still need some work. Because if they get the joke, they've, they've, you know, internalized what this structure is for. Um, so yeah, the biggest thing I've learned from a stand-up comedian is that I can uh, I can use you know content from anywhere um, and kind of use it productively. Cool. That is yeah, very that... funny because I actually had that exact experience when trying to help someone with their English, and I like mm-hmm. used that joke as an example, and they didn't get it, and I was like, okay, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, it's a good indicator. So Humor, humor is such a great thing to use in the classroom, and and it's like one of those things with modern teaching. It's kind of a, kind of a given that you're going to be a little bit more conversational and free. Um, you know, things aren't quite as traditional as they used to be, um, but it really is a great indicator and thing to use in the classroom as a gauge for what students are getting. Um, you know, uh, when it comes to like cultural things that they're going to pick up on. So, yeah, I um, yeah, I actually really love that because jokes can be such a contextual like you were saying can be so contextual and cultural and so like and like getting a joke in another language i've i so i've lived in other in a couple of other countries where i didn't speak the language um there wasn't my first language and that that's always like a that's such a a great feeling to either get a joke in another language Mm -hmm. or make a joke in another language and have people laugh. It's such a cool, cool experience to be like, I did this. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember the first time I ever made a joke in Japanese and I had all these, like, I was, um, sorry, I've got a bug flying around my room. Um, there was a, yeah, I made a joke in Japanese and like the, um, people in the room that were Japanese were like laughing at it. And it was just like such a, like, yes, got it. I'm getting the language. It's uh yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we're still waiting to have that experience in English, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm yeah. I've been trying to get people to laugh at my jokes in English for years. So (laughs) 
<laughs> All right. I could do another yeah. question if you got time. Yeah. I mean, technically we have, yeah, we have all the time in the world. We're just being horrible to Josh the more that we uh, cut into his game. But also he's dead inside. So let's do it. <laughs> also, he hates being on camera, so. Yeah. Okay. So this is a question we did last time. I guess we could just do it again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who's your favorite obscure historical figure? Uh, my favorite his uh, favorite obscure historical figure is a guy named Marmaduke Langdale. Um, Marmaduke Langdale was a, a commander during the English Civil Wars. Um, he was a royalist commander. Um, he also uh, are how familiar are, how familiar are you with the English Civil War? I know it happened, and I know it was perfect. Involved. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, the big decisive battle in the English Civil War is the Battle of Marston Moor um, in 1644. Um, that's kind of where Oliver Cromwell becomes like, you know, the you know, real dominant force that he is. Um, after that battle, the Royalists in the North are pretty much crushed. Um, one of the only contingents of the Royalist army that survives is referred to as the Northern Horse, obviously mainly cavalry troopers, um, and they're under the command of Marmaduke Langdale. Um, I think he's an interesting fellow because he, you know, he fights through the war. He ends up escaping to the continent after things go south for the Royalists. Um, he ends up serving in several different um, Catholic militaries. Um, he ends up, I believe he converted to Catholicism officially. Um, a lot of those Royalists, you know, were kind of crypto Catholics back when you still had to technically be an Anglican. You couldn't tell anyone you were Catholic, really. Um, so yeah, interesting fellow. Uh, he, you know, he has kind of the things he's, well, relatively famous for, and then he has kind of a longer career. He ends up, um, you know, serving the Royal court in exile. Um, just a fascinating guy. Um, and he also, uh, he has, he had a reputation for being very, uh, very dour and straight laced. And when you see a picture of him, uh, you can, you can definitely get that vibe off of him. He's, he's a person whose appearance most definitely matches his personality. What's his name one more time? Uh, his name is Marmaduke, like the dog, uh, Langdale, L-A-N-G-D-A-L-E. He's a, he's a stern looking fellow. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going to try and. I feel like before we, uh, before we move on from this question, we should, uh, I think in the tradition of the last time we asked this question, follow it up with who is your favorite obscure historical fascist? Don't even be obscure. Just your favorite historical fascist. Um, and no context. Just give us a soundbite that we can clip and we'll move on. Uh, Gabriele Denuncio. Oh, I've never even heard of that one. I just like saying his name. I don't like him. I don't like his stuff as a person, I promise. Um, I just think he has a fun name. Um, but then again, a lot of those fascists are Italian, so all their names are kind of fun to say. Yeah, that's fair. Is, is that going to get me canceled? Honestly, yeah. I feel like you could have given... You, there's so many worse answers you can give. Yeah, yeah I and feel like... Denunzio was sort of like... Focus on anything in this episode that was offensive, it was me dropping a slur. So. That's true. Don't you, don't you worry about that. <laughs> yeah, but it was an expired slur. Uh, <laughs> that, do slurs expire? Is there like a best before date on them? Yeah, I as a cis straight white dude have decided this. A worst before <laughs> date? Well, okay. See, there's a reason we have that, uh, we have that tag just locked and loaded, ready to go. All right. Well, uh, I think this is a good a time as any to um, take a little mini pee break and then pivot to game. Uh, All right. Interpissin. Let's do it. Interpissin. Right. Here we go. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right. Welcome back. Did you play that once or twice, Josh? He played it twice. Um, oh, we... Okay. I was like, there's no way it's that long. I was just getting back to my chair and uh, he restarted it. So thank you, Josh. I forgot we haven't even played Josh's introduction music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you 
have far too many of these, Kelly. It says a lot about Josh as a person that he just hates music and dancing this much. I think it does say a lot. Maybe the German heritage has something to do with it. I mean, some bad stuff happens when those guys go in lockstep, am I right? <laughs> All, right. All right. So we're up for a game today. And being that our theme was shipwrecks today, I decided to do our game a little bit in line with that sort of theme uh, with a little twist on it. I really hope that nobody in this chat has played Iron Lung. <laughs> I appreciate the woof there. Uh, so we are going on a underwater journey. At the end of the 23rd century, an event occurred that changed the nature of humanity. The Quiet Rapture. While no records of this time exist, we know, as far as we know, the fact of the matter is that humanity is on its last legs. There is no chance of long-term survival. However, remnants of a particular colony still exist on the SS Juventus, a rugged ship on its last legs. Through the scanners, you've come across a moon, its surface scarred, its checkered landscape filled with oceans. These oceans are full of blood. Whose blood? It is a mystery. Why the blood is there is a mystery. How the blood got there is a mystery. What isn't a mystery to the crew, though, is that an old cruiser, the Conjunctus, a relic of the old world, exists under these bloody seas, and preliminary scouting of the ship reveals that it still has power. If a crew can enter this vessel and access the memories of the old craft, perhaps a revelation of the rapture could be discovered. Or, at the very least, it could mean finding a way to survive a little longer in this hellscape of a galaxy. So that's cool. our uh, that's the tone we're setting for this one. Very somber, very serious stuff, which I'm sure all these characters will keep with yeah. the entire time. <laughs> we're totally. Also, I'm not entirely sure why my webcam is flashing right now. We'll we'll add that as part of the mood. It's flickering lights like a horror story. Mm -hmm. I hope there's no epileptics in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Josh, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, to get things started, though, we will have our characters introduced. We'll start with our co-host, Kelly. What is, who is your character? What do they look like? And what are they like? Why, why am I always getting picked on here to go first? Because I know you didn't pick a name and I'm making you sweat on the spot. No, my name is Pego. I got inspired by the story. <laughs> oh, nice. okay. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, describe yourself. What do you look like? Yeah, well, I, you know, I'm tall, dark, very smooth skin. A lot of people say I'm robust and imposing and almost like, I don't know if you've seen people, someone like this, but they're like a little boxy almost. All right, all right, all right. And yeah. what are they like? Uh, boxy, well, sorry, just to be clear, boxy like the internet sensation or boxy Oh, like? Jesus Christ, that's a callback. Mm. We don't we don't do fifteen year old memes on this show. Nicole. I have no idea what that means, so I'm gonna say <laughs> yes and no. Okay, cool. Then I want you to talk in Boxy's voice for the rest oh, of the episode. Don't you fucking dare! I, I thought that like the space reserved for remembering who that was was gone in my brain, but <laughs> and then it just fired <laughs> back. <laughs> You are welcome. I watched a whole mm. mini like YouTube video that was like a mini doc on like the rise and fall of Boxy. But anyways, continue. Yeah, so um yeah, I kind of just uh came online when the ship went to yellow alert or whatever kind of alert you would go to when you this kind of event happens, I guess. Okay. Um but like I've been pretty dormant when not in use. Are you a robot? Oh, did I mention my character is <laughs> a robot? <laughs> there you go. Oh, Wait, did, did it work? It did yes, work. Yes, and it I'm did. Very upset. Oh, sweet. Again? <laughs> all right. Oh, all it's right. just nothing. No big deal. My character is <laughs> a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, finally, the, uh, the soundboard gets its true use. Ship posting in the middle of a show. Oh, this is this is. The sounds board's got nothing on this thing, trust me. All right. Well, we'll go with our actual host, our alleged actual host, next, Nicole. Oh, I don't get uh, to talk about my unique talent? Oh, what was your unique talent? I'm sorry. You got don't need oxygen here. to breathe. Oh, there you go. Nicely done. Yeah. 
Um, so my character's name is Helm McKeelstern. Um, I am an uh, old and grizzled human. I'm missing an eye. I have a glass, one glass eye and a peg leg. Um, so no one exactly remembers where I came from or when I boarded the ship. Um, I tell people that I've been sailing my whole life, but it like, as soon as you start delving into that, it quickly becomes apparent that that is not true. Um, so am I using my real name? Probably not. Maybe I just mashed a bunch of sailing terms together. Who's to say? Um, am I just an opportunity opportunist that joined the crew? Am I a grifter? Am I just trying to cover up a bout of amnesia? Uh, who's to say? Who's to... Uh, We're talking about you or your character. Same. <laughs> Um, am I just too lazy to write a backstory for my character? No, 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 no way to tell. Um, I, uh, yeah, do you want to know what I'm good and bad at? Or uh, just your unique it? talent, if you wouldn't oh. mind. Um, yeah, so my unique talent is that I'm able to plug my nose um, and build up enough pressure in my head to shoot my glass eye out like a cannonball or a projectile. Um, science can't explain it. Don't bother trying. Um, that is my special talent. All right. And last but certainly not least, our guest character, if you could let us know who you are. Uh, sure. Uh, my name is Whaleback Willie. <laughs> um, uh, Shoulder-length gray hair, a long, drooping gray mustache. A squat build, roughly Joe Pesci-sized. Um, Light brown mm -hmm. eyes, the color of burlap. Um, oh, I need to <laughs> hold on. I need to... Oh, yes. Oh, perfect. Oh, hell yeah. Costumes. We always appreciate that here. All right. There we go. Yes. Perfect. Uh, all right. Um, where am I? Uh, missing. <laughs> missing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, props even. Missing my left hand. Uh, from back in my sailing days, um, which has been replaced with metal tongs. Pretend these are metal. Uh, similar to what you might use for grilling. Um, they are clicky clackable. <laughs> um, and I can use them as a rudimentary grabber. Um, uh, They're also really good for hitting your mic. It's, <laughs> phen uh, it's phenomenal. Um, Almost exclusively dresses in a decaying old naval uniform uh, with a mishmash of patches and medals from an incoherent mix of nations and services. Um, uh, I used to be a sea captain. Um, stories indicate a little bit of military and some civilian sailing experience. Uh, sailing days ended with the incident. Um, as yet, never really expanded upon what that was, but gesture vaguely with the tongs whenever it's mentioned. Um, <laughs> now also deathly afraid of entering water. Um, my unique talent is I can communicate fluently with elephant seals, provided that they speak the South Seas dialect. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. All right. And now that we have our players in their roles, I guess we'll get started. So we open in the uh, launching hall of the ship, the SS Uventus. Uventus, sorry. My Latin is not great. <laughs> uh, the admiral of the entire fleet has you three standing on attention in front of a large, yet somewhat beat-up-looking submarine. Your ship has landed in the bloody sea, and you three, upon the entire crew drawing lots, have been selected as the crew to enter the wreckage. I don't know what standing at attention is. Is it this? Okay, good. I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh, I'm sorry. Are we getting labels here now? Kelly. I was trying to do what other people were talking, and you know, I assumed these two were going to immediately launch into a beautiful conversation about their, you know, their characters, of what what brought them to this moment. Ah, oh, well, I mean, what's brought you to this moment is that you have drawn lots, and you are now the three people. Lots who are of going what? To... 
Shut up, Nicole. <laughs> lots, lots of what, Josh? Well, hang on. I can't. I can't draw lots yet. Pego is now online. Oh boy, <laughs> that's gonna be I'm gonna obnoxious. Hate that. <laughs> so I am the helpful pegging robot. Please tell me the nature <laughs> of the emergency. I, Wait, I just she... I just um I just realized that I think my wife just got home from work and I didn't tell her like any of the stuff that we were doing so she's just gonna walk in and see me in my jacket holding our kitchen <laughs> tongs. So, <laughs> so, oh hell yeah! So and I'm hopefully excited. talking in some sort of like yeah. character voice. The the South Seas dialect of elephant seal. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, so yes, um, the admiral, a steely faced man with absolutely no humor abound, says, "You three." could be the last hope of this great nation on this ship. Uh, in fact, you could be the future of the species. I wish you good luck in your hunt for any information involving what happened before the rapture. He gives you a strong and stern salute. And with that, he gestures expectantly for you to enter the summary. No, I don't like being the big picture, Kelly. We're all equal in this place. <laughs> okay. So, so yes. What, what is on your what? What's on your can? Just tell us the joke, Kelly. What? Can you not read it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, I see, I didn't want to get. Yeah, I don't want to get in trouble because the unofficial beer of the show has slowly become Old Milwaukee, and I panicked when I didn't have any. But I'm really gunning for that sponsorship, so I'm trying to, you know, I'm incognito here. Gotcha, okay. Very nice, very nice. Um, okay, so sorry, what's happening? What, what are we we're you're getting on the ship? The, you're entering the submarine, the three of you. Okay, cool. Um, well... Please explain how I may assist you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so ha I'm going to... Pretend, walk confidently, stride confidently onto the, well, stride confidently with the, like, I've got like a, a crutch, so I'm kind of crutching confidently um, onto the ship, and uh, I'm going to go straight for the wheel, um, and pretend that I know what I'm doing, um, and I'm gonna right. say, way, way anger. <laughs> all right, all right, and uh, the other two, what are you guys' plans here? Uh, Pego, you do have to be somewhat more responsive than just asking for assistance. <laughs> um, yeah, well, okay, I think I just, I, I'm gonna follow for now. I'm, I'm very ready to, uh, to assist, because, like, you know, I, I'm helpful, like all of my characters always are. Um, oh, no. I can, <laughs> I can lead with my, I got one of those little, like, R2-D2 things that he, like, screws into the computers with, so I feel like that's both a gadget and a tool as needed. Yes. So I feel like I'm kind of looking for things that I can jam my tool into and just start screwing. Ah, yes. Um, Very nice. Are we, are we just staying on deck here or can I go in the ship? You can go into the submarine. Submarine. Um, yes. All right. So wait, we're uh, kind of I landed on the planet and there's like, we're going to drop the submarine into the blood pool is the idea. Yes, exactly. That is exactly the idea. Is this blood opaque or is it semi it, semi It's like it comes straight out of the source. It's like there's blood thinners in it. So it's somewhat viscous but not like clotting viscous. Okay. So we can kind of see where we're going. Yes. Yes, okay. you can see a little bit ahead of you. So I say Yar is just like the old ship. That's uh Let's see how we can dive this thing. And I just start pushing buttons. Um, All right. So on that note, if we're going to start pushing buttons here, I have too many windows because people are inconsistent here. Oh, Every submarine doesn't Unlike have too many the submarine. windows. Oh. <laughs> God, we're such fucking hacks. Like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first... We're going to get Whaleback Willie to roll me a perception check. All right. Is that just a 1d6? That'd be 2d6. 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 Yeah, in so this every, economy. Every, <laughs> everything is 2d6, <laughs> but perception can be one of the things you're good or bad at. Yes. So he's good at perception, oh, which yeah. means that he takes... Yeah, so roll with advantage there if that 
makes sense to you. I'm just rolling two dice, right? It's yeah. yeah however you want to do it, I I just thought it was kind of clever that you could roll four dice and just pick the better pair. But I'm just a huge nerd for aesthetics. Doing two. Uh, I've got a four and a six. So you've got ten on that one. Now roll those two again. Or oh, I did the math in my head. Uh, it's a four and a two. Sorry. Four and a two. So <laughs> you have a six. Okay. Now I'll say that's not right. Again. It's not a great start to my rolling experience. Uh, a two and a one. Ooh, even better. My goodness. Uh, all right. So you, because both those kind of sucked, uh, you fail to notice that Helmut Keelstern has currently hit the dive button without first sealing the hatch. Oh, no. This is classic. This just happened on the Edmund Fitzgerald. They weren't sealed <laughs> properly. Maybe. So- Maybe that's what happened. <laughs> Nicole Maybe. has already taken a side. <laughs> yeah. As a craft I'm clearly begins, not taking the strolling side. Uh, however, despite your failure in perception right there, once the craft begins to lower gently into the blood, you realize that the hatch is not sealed yet, and if you do not hurry towards it, you will begin taking on blood. Danger, danger, blood ingress detected. Please advise on resolution. Okay. Um... Having served on similar vessels like this in the past, um, I'm well aware that there's an emergency uh, hatch closure um, a little bit closer down into where we are. Um, we don't have to actually make it all the way to the top. Um, so I'm going to reach for that lever and pull the emergency closure. All right. Uh, I'm going to get you to roll wisdom on that just to make sure that you know which one is which. All right. Let's hope your rolls are a little bit better this time. All right. All right. A five and a one. Okay, and then roll them again. A three and a one. All right, so six. So you are able to spot the correct lever to pull. And as you pull it, you hear the confirming hiss of pneumatics closing the hatch at the top of the submarine. You have avoided flooding the craft. Hell yeah. Helm McKeelstern, holding the wheel, is attempting to read the charts that guide them towards the craft. Mm -hmm. Um, Although the other two notice that they look very confused while consulting them, like they can't actually read nautical charts. I I can't read nautical charts? No, No. Helm McKeelstern can't. Oh. Yes. It's very apparent because they're looking at the charts very confusedly. Oh, so I do I perceive that Helm McKeelstern is confused? Yes, because it does not take much to notice the strained look on their face as they are attempting to parse any information of where to go. Uh, what's, what's Helm's rank? What is Helm's rank? Why don't you ask them that? I, well, <laughs> I, I, I feel like the, the robot would know. But no one knows about Helm McKeelstern and how they ended up on oh, this Oh, okay. Um, you gotta pay attention to the backstories, Kelly. Right, okay. Uh, I'm just gonna, then, then I guess I'm gonna make an assumption. Ensign McKeelstern, do you need assistance? <laughs> <laughs> did you, sorry, did you call me Captain? It's hard Ensign. to tell. Hanson? Ensign. Yeah, because you Hanson. Because <laughs> <laughs> I Hanson in, this it, book. It, 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 no, in the no, like Hanson, like the band. In the future, that's like one of the lowest ranks you can be. <laughs> <laughs> now listen here, you robotic son of a bitch. This is my ship. The, the admiral took me aside and told me that I'm in charge here. So you just respect your elders. Unable to parse. And I ignore Helm McKilstern, and I just kind of uh, roll up to the helm. The, you know, the actual helm with my little R2-D2 <laughs> arm, and I just plug into it to try to read the maps. All right, so you're going to take an intelligence roll there. Uh, ooh, well, I'm good at that. Well, That's yes, fine, you I got it. Your All dice right. cam. <laughs> of course, uh, well, it's for mistake. the viewers at home. All of them. All one of them. So I'm guessing you're going to take the 10 there over the... Yeah, because I'm good at it. 
All right, so with a little whir, a click, and a hiss, the uh, the star the star charts, the sea charts become abundantly clear to Pago, and they are able to guide Helma Keelstern towards the vessel. Hell yeah! You hear rumbling as the craft plods through the viscous liquid that you find yourselves in. There's groans as the pressure further why is the dice cam up front <laughs> well because you didn't want to be up front i'll put you up front no let's do this because I'm this situation is getting control. pretty dicey <laughs> the strains and groans of the pressure on the craft i said abundantly dicey clear. josh shut the fuck up <laughs> nicole <laughs> <laughs> but then what was normal sounds of pressure on the craft become louder and a large thump rocks the craft and through the porthole you see a dark object cast by before speeding past before you can discern what it is can we roll a quick perception check and see you guys all sure can should i roll blue or red here what do you what's lucky or you think uh... i mean white went better for you last time or blue i guess that is it looks it's white, white it's bluish roll. white Ooh, it's yeah. Nice. Okay, nine. All right, and Whaleback Willie, I'll get you to roll your perception. Uh, six. Six, and then roll it again because you're good at perception, so we'll see if you oh, get a better roll the second time. That's right. You sure are good at perceiving. <laughs> Five. All right, so we'll go with the six on that one. <laughs> and Helm McKeelstern. Kelly, I need you to roll my dice for me. Okay, are you good or bad or normal at this? I am normal. Unlikely. All right, you got a nine then. A All nine. Right. Okay. So Helm and Pego, from their position near the wheel, are able to see fins, gills, and a giant yellow eye as they go by. Ooh. Okay. Do, do I know enough to know what this, like, creature might be in what language it or what kind of like clicks and whistles it might speak uh you don't know what it speaks however when you were scanning the craft for the nautical charts you also found out that it has a rudimentary weapon system a torpedo bay with four working torpedoes well unfortunately pego was not built to kill pego was built to love um <laughs> so i i think what i would try to do is kind of plug in well i guess i'm still plugged in but i want to use maybe the ship's broadcast system if it has one okay to kind of like ping the animal and i i guess i would just use my like robot deduction and just go with the best click and pop language that i know well why don't you roll me a persuasion then okay well i'm bad at persuasion so I mean, you've got to persuade this craft, this creature. Wow, I'm actually impressed. So they're both nines. No, the one's an eight. Okay, I got an eight. Yeah. So, despite having no idea what you're doing, you begin clicking and popping with a frequency that seems familiar to the beast circling the submarine, and it backs off slightly. However, the other two don't know what you're doing. If you both could roll bravery checks for me. Oh, oh this is I'm bad at this. Um, Kelly, can you roll me a bravery check? Oh, is that a three I see there? Oh, oh no, I'm about to ruin this for everybody. Uh, and Whaleback Willie, you also need to do a bravery check. So if you could roll uh, your d sixes twice for me, and I'm also roll. I'm also bad at bravery. Yes, oh, no. you are. <laughs> Hell yeah, I love my crew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I've experienced the terror of the sea. So yeah, it's it's taken all that. Away I have from me. not experienced the terror of the sea, but I am a coward. All right, I rolled a nine. A nine, okay, and then roll the set again. 
Eight. Eight. Well, that's not bad then. So you take the eight. Despite the fact that your teeth are just about chattering at the fear of already being under, not water, but something close enough to to give you pause, you're able to hold strong and avoid panicking. Be a lot more effective since we're in the water if it gave him flippers. Uh, Helm McKeelstern on the other pies. hand. I'm going to murder one of you the next time I see you. What is the uh, what is the slur for robot? <laughs> <laughs> Tin can. I think it's Roomba. <laughs> uh, Helm McKeelstern, however, you have no idea what this robot is doing, making that much noise near a giant creature that looked like it had a very large eye, which implies a very large creature. And in your panic, you grab and pull Pego out of the console. <laughs> Yar, what are you doing over there? I can't handle it. <laughs> Pego, you tumble to the floor, and your connection device... Um, oh, no. Actually, it's his wiener. <laughs> Not my device. <laughs> <laughs> your, your gadget, your R2-D2 thing... Uh, please roll me an agility. Also bad at that. Okay, that's so, a four. And then roll me a, a reaction. I'm great at that. So we'll give you a nine for that one. So... You aren't able to step around Helma Keelstern as they attempt to grab and pull you out of there. But due to your reaction speeds after the, it's happening, you're able to salvage your tool from being damaged from the forceful extraction from the console. Though you tumble to the ground and are rattled somewhat, you're uh, unable error, to move for a error, couple seconds. Error. <laughs> as if on cue... There's another collision against the sub. It rocks it even harder this time and knocks both the other two crewmen off their feet for a second. Uh, oh no. Uh, my sea legs! <laughs> <laughs> so we're yeah. all just kind of we're all just kind of laying on our backs here? Yes, as the sub continues to be battered over and over again. Oh no. Now, Pego, due to your readings of the nautical charts, you know that you're close to the shipwreck. You might be able to get there in time. Uh, yeah, the problem is that I'm sort of like, I'm sort of like a big, fairly rectangular thing on like treads, you know, like ah, sort of so shaped you're, like you're this. On the ground. Yeah, so, so I'm on, on pitch on my back and I can't quite roll to my front. So I'm going to appeal for help here. <laughs> um, Error, I can, tr I I can try sheltered. to help out. Please rescue uh, I can try to help out. My um my my tongs aren't great for this, but I can try to help out. Be a good guy. All right. So, if that's the case, I will accept your tongs. <laughs> I will get you to give a strength check to try to lift up Pego. All right. Strength, I am bad at strength. <laughs> so, let's roll, baby. <laughs> Six. All right, and roll again. It's coming. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this is what people pay to see. Exactly. Eight. Eight. So we take a six from that because we take the worst roll. And uh, with great difficulty, you are able to shift <laughs> Pego back onto its treads. But as you do that last little push, you hear a pop in your lower back. Oh, no. You are immediately Thank you, stiffened human. up. What are you, over 30? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so for, from now on, whenever you do a strength check, you will be taking a negative one. Right. Do That's I notice that they're, they're in pain? They, they grimace, but they're able to, to stomach the best of it. All right. Uh, all right, so Pego, you're back on your treads. The sh uh, the so I 
like, can I just tell out of the porthole that we're approaching whatever thing? Uh, you just knew based on the positioning of the nautical charts versus the subs position when you were still plugged into the console. Am I still able to plug back into the console? Your, uh, your tool is currently unable to be used for a little while. You know, you were just forcefully ejected from a port. Oh, so I've got a little bit of a refractory period on my tool. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, then I is uh, I I want to look around. Like, what is Helm doing right now? Helm is laying on the ground, still recovering. Although, what is their plan now that they've you know the the rumbling has stopped? I would like to go for the nearest exit and try to open it <laughs> <laughs> because I am freaking out. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, I'm gonna get you a roll. Uh, let's see what would work well for that then. I'm going to say roll a speed check. All right, Kelly, that's you. All right, are you good at it? Are you bad at it? Um, for speed? Uh, I'm bad at speed. So you... All right, that's a... Is that a snake eyes I see there? Oh, it sure (laughs) is. All right. As, As you attempt to run towards the nearest um, release exit, you uh, trip over your own peg leg and fall face first into the console, pushing the forward thrusters to the max. Oh. The sub jets forward. <laughs> I f- <laughs> failed in the best way possible. <laughs> the, this craft rockets towards the, the shipwreck, and with a tremendous crash, which I'm sure is every archaeologist is cringing right now. You burst into the shipwreck and more oh. Oh, no. into the hull. Does the ship have any kind of like tools or implements on it that aren't the like weapons? Uh, I mean, it's got a couple of little like grabby hands for like grabbing stuff. Okay, are we like clean through the exterior hull? You are wedged in the exterior hall. Uh, does it appear to be like blood? Like, do we have kind of like a front window or? You guys have two portholes on each side of the craft and one in the front, which is larger. Okay. And... So does it appear that like that part of us that's inside of this craft? Am I seeing like it just a more submersion in blood or is there any kind of like airspace or? That appears to still be submerged. Okay. Because we haven't pierced the hull. Uh you're you're you've pierced the hull, but inside the hull there's just more um more blood. Like it, that, oh, that okay. part has since leaked in. Oh, okay. Status report. We have achieved penetration. There <laughs> appears to be still more blood. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are Please so many cringe I. jokes. <laughs> there are so many crude jokes to make here. <laughs> I do not understand jokes. <laughs> um, but you understand love? You said you were built to love. Yes, I am programmed to love in many ways. Would you like to be pegged or choose from a list of other options? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see the list, please. Could you list the other options? Main option is pegging, but we have other options in beta mode. Would you like to enter beta mode? <laughs> yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> beta options include hugging, um, exterior massage. <laughs> uh, what else we got? <laughs> Uh, foot play, also known as tread play. <laughs> and All right. B- bondage. <laughs> God, that escalated quickly. Can All I right. say like an all at once button? <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> the works. The works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I mean, if you were like an elevator and you wanted to go to every floor, <laughs> it's just like you a get kid there in an eventually. elevator. 
<laughs> not hey, no, 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 not a, not a kid in an elevator. Uh, a legal aged adult in an elevator. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, that's just, fair. Just, bad, bad uh, metaphor. That's uh, my yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All Wait, right. no, in this uh, well, we we should establish this. In this futuristic society, what is the age no, of consent? Really this is not a libertarian uh, paradise. No, no, no. We, no. There Kelly. were roads. Josh, Josh there can ain't... leave the game quick before we can talk more. There ain't no age of consent laws at sea, boy. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. That right. is correct. <laughs> Whale back <laughs> Willie, I need you to take a perception check for me, please. Uh all right. Fair enough. Uh, I'm good at perception. <laughs> Waiting for you to make a selection. <laughs> uh, 12? 12. Jesus, yeah. all right. Damn. Well, that's, I'm not even going to make you bother taking a second roll, because that's the best you can do. So, peering through the cloud of blood, like, with the eyes of a hawk, you spot a glowing console just a few meters into the submerged hall attached to what appears to be an airlock door hmm. are there two co-consoles or is this one console ruling alone just one solo console okay that joke is just for you josh i think that's <laughs> called a dictator <laughs> All right. And then on top of that, as you look around the sub, you notice that there are dive suits prepared for the crew. For the human crew? <laughs> um, there are three suits. Whether or not you need one is irrelevant. <laughs> well, I, well, but the thing is, I am... I said I can thrive. I don't need oxygen to breathe, but I don't. I don't necessarily know that I'm water. Like I have to be waterproof enough to, you know, to peg and love people otherwise. But I don't know if I'm waterproof enough to be submerged in blood. Only one way to find out, eh? Um, I guess. Okay, I well, guess with the uh, with the suits, I need to make sure that there's one that will fit my unique body shape. Um, roughly, have you described that unique body shape? Roughly, <laughs> Joe Pesci. Um, if, <laughs> if there's if there's one that looks like that will fit me there is a Joe Pesci sized diving suit and with a glove apparatus that fits perfectly around your tongue hands oh perfect <laughs> scanning I have determined you to be exactly 1.214 Pesci's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pesci's is just a measure in, in the future. In the new world, in the 23rd yeah. century. <laughs> it's uh, it's like P with a lowercase s dot is the... Is <laughs> yes. The perfect, uh, perfect. So are you guys going to suit up? Yeah, I immediately try to put my suit on, but I'm clearly putting it on backwards. <laughs> perfect. Uh, I guess I want to, like, attempt to pull the suit over... I guess my top portion is I'm going to assume that my treads are very like rugged and like it's really just maybe like my head area that needs to be water protected. So I'm going to try to like pull the suit over my like articulating head and just like maybe tie it in a knot. See if that'll work. Okay. And so they actually have like uh, the little stereotypical astronaut bubble helmets. So if you tie it shut, you actually can now use that bubble helmet as a way of keeping your head waterproof. All right. I can, I can live with that. All right. Now, now that you're all suited up and uh, helmet keelstern somewhat so. So I, I realize that I'm putting it on backwards and I go, oh, it's, it's different than me last ship. My me last <laughs> ship that this is, this is the way that they went on. And I, and I, and I put it on properly now. And it is uh, unsaid amongst the crew that these are standardized equipments and <laughs> normal across all ships. <laughs> all right. So there, beside the, um, the, air, the sorry, the hatch, there is a uh, open button that is blinking red and is ready for you guys to push at any minute. Yeah. If there's something blinking red, I immediately push it. Yeah. I'm going to push it. <laughs> all right. Can we all push it, it together? <laughs> yes, it's one. <laughs> all right. With uh, the button pushed, 
a hatch seals behind you to keep the rest of the sub um, airtight, and the hatch opens, flooding the airlock with thick, viscous blood. And you jerk. Well, you said it wasn't that breath. viscous, though. How viscous is the blood? Well, now and you're what consistency deep... in this. Well, Joshua. you're deeper. Un... Well, speaking of consistency, you're deeper under water now. Now it's colder, and there's greater pressure, which means the blood would become more viscous. I'll allow it. <laughs> Don't you ever challenge me again, Nicole. <laughs> it won't, I promise. And with the three of you journeying into the dark pit, that is where we're going to end the story today. Oh, wow. We, we, we got to the place we were supposed to explore. You sure did. Nice. All right. All right. And uh, yeah, that's the game. So I pretty sure there's something to press for that but i don't know and i was gonna use one of these i feel like there there's a whole bunch of these that are very auto tuny and i was just gonna kind of manually sing the the very dramatic outro um mm -hmm. but i don't thought of it now and it didn't hotkey that one so so you know. i guess that's something to wait till next time but yes thank you guys for the excellent first chapter of this new adventure i'm hoping everyone had fun always oh yeah Perfect, perfect. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say maybe this would be a time for us to. We're plug. just going to go with this one. That's the end of the show or the, 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 the game, I guess. But anyways. Yeah, did that one work? Uh, I yes. heard a thing. <laughs> it sure did. I'm just going to flash the Twitter handle for yeah. Beyond the Breakers. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. A podcast that you guys should definitely check out because it is very good. Yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to plug before you go, Tanner? Or before we wrap up? Um, I mean, we're on Twitter at Beyond underscore Breakers. We're on Instagram also. You can search for us there. Um... I'm on Twitter at Hive Fleet Hodag if you if you just want more of me uh, specifically. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, check out the show. We we try to do a good job every week and uh, we have quite a few episodes out now. And uh, yeah, that's all I've got. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to play with us. This is really fun. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And, and be sure to check out the voice mod app. Well, all's well that ends well. Isn't that right? Thank you so much for coming out. <laughs> oh, it's especially funny because I sound normal to me. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear the baby voice? Yes. Where did you find this? Why did you buy it? The one voice? Would it be uh would it be illegal for you to read the erotica in that voice? <laughs> <laughs> it should be. I think this is the one I was looking for. Oh, it's time for the erotica. Uh, uh, uh. We're gonna learn about a dildo. Guess where it goes. <laughs> Wish I had myself a nice No, 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 no. Oh boy, well, that's enough of that. You're banned now. <laughs> <laughs>